technological and engineering excellence. It's one of the things that makes motor racing so unique from the design process to the manufacture, to the build, to testing, to actually going out and racing these incredible cars and bikes. Now, if you want a career on that side of the fence, chances are you're gonna need a degree in physics, engineering, aeronautics, maths. But what if you're just starting out on that path? Or what if, like me, you just want to tinker a bit? Well, I've come here to the Silverstone Museum to find out some more. Here we are, Lego Technic. Now, I have a lot of these sets, which I've built, completed, and are on display at my house. But are the real life processes that we see in motorsport actually carried over into these Lego Technic sets? What can we learn about motorsport through building them? And can putting these incredible pieces together help young people gain an understanding and an interest in studying motorsport engineering? Frankly, I can't answer those questions, but I do know someone who can. Hey, Bernie. Hi, Will. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited to get into this. Thank you for joining me. Now, you have been an engineer in motorsport and particularly in Formula One for a number of years. People will have seen you on the pit wall yeah. and now on TV yeah. as a pundit. As How a pundit. did you get into motorsport? Well, I was a bit unsure what I wanted to do, but I did mathematics at school and I really, I didn't have this ability to build things, but I really enjoyed taking things apart. So I enjoyed figuring out how they worked, taking simple things at home apart and building it together then. And this is really interesting to get into the detail of how these bits work. Amazing. Let's take a look at the models we've got here. We're going to start with the Ford GT. Now this, Madly is, is one of the easier models to put together at just under 1,500 pieces, which I think shows the complexity of some of them. One twelfth scale model of the Ford GT, an independent suspension. So we've already done the checked. We've checked. We've pushed each corner down just to double check. That it that, works. It yes, works. It does. It does. But, but it's amazing. A, a fully working V6 engine in the back, and we can see the pistons moving in that. It's an incredible model. Now this next one, I very happily built this with a couple of friends not too long ago. And Anthony Davidson was telling me what, what's amazing uh, with these cars is he's now taking his son to races and his son has such an understanding of how the cars in the garage are put together because he's, he's built his Lego Technic sets. He's built this car with his dad. And so when he sees the wheels going on or they're working on the gearbox or the engine, he's seen it, he's made it, he's built it himself. For kids, it's really hard to explain what engineering is, what design is, how certain components, like you're describing the suspension work, even for some adults, that's hard to explain. So to be fit to look into the car, rotate one wheel, see the effect on the other wheel, move some suspension, see the effect on the spring, see the effect on the other wheel. Like, there's no clearer explanation of independent suspension than moving one wheel and the other wheel not moving. So, it's just to try and get that visual. And it's so important to encourage kids to just learn and play and experiment and test. And it's learning without learning. Learning, yeah. Onto the Ferrari Daytona SP3. Now, obviously not completed. It's the 1 8th scale, so slightly larger. Slightly more pieces, 3,778. Um, but what I love about this, and, and we have it here in this stage of the build, is just to see the absolute complexities of everything. It's just, this is just different level. I love things like the gear shift. Oh yeah, because you click that. Yeah. And here, you've got the upshift, downshift. I love, I just love seeing it moving from the selector through your drive through and all the way to the gearbox at the back. It just, the follow through of the movement is really quite incredible. Like just from a mechanical design point of view, really interesting. One thing I've come to love about Lego Technic are the manuals, which could be coffee table books in and of themselves. And again, I love this. <laughs> no words, so it's absolutely universal internationally, the piece by manual. piece, 
part by part, step by step. And so finally, to this, the McLaren Formula One car, the thing that binds <laughs> us together. It's a beautiful, beautiful model. The process that goes into it, the understanding, building the engine, the side pods. Yeah, even things like the little winglets over yeah. the tires. Just, I love it and it feels like it's almost more intricate in a way than the real car because someone's had to take the real car, reverse engineer it and then build it on a smaller scale with all the working parts. Well, these models are all incredibly cool. I think I'll let you have that. Um, but how do you go from what is on track to what you find in the box? Well, uh, we have Aurelien Rufion, who is a design manager at Lego Technic. So Aurelien, tell us, how do you decide on uh, which cars you're going to recreate in Lego Technic? So, uh, thanks for the question. This is uh, actually, we are looking at what's out there in the real world. And also we're trying to, to reach out to the, to the manufacturers and then to the, to the teams that creates the next car that will be on the market that no one can see yet. And we try to, to bring something that will be uh, new to the assortment, but also new to the market. And if there's a car that brings something new in functionalities, we really like to take that one because that will be exactly what we, we want to do for, for our audience. One of the things that I'm really interested in as a, a designer is how you go from the idea, from the real car that we can see on the box to the Lego version. Um, so on that specific car, the, the Ferrari Daytona SP3, it's actually a very long process. It's about two years of development time. So we start from getting the idea of making that car, then we meet the partner, we go to Italy, visit them and see what they have. They are cooking and then they, they presented us that uh, specific car saying like, it's gonna be released in that time. And then we felt like, oh, that's gonna be perfect for our timing. So we should do this one. And then start the idea. So we've created the first concept where we actually build something physical with Lego element, Lego bricks and then we present them that first idea, that first concept. And then from that, we have the, the green light. And then we start that two year development. And in Lego Technic, we want to include as many functions as possible. So it's real car and very realistic and authentic as well. So both the shapes and the functions are very important to us. That's really interesting insight. One of the things that's really interesting to me is you mentioned, you know, at the very start that you start to work on cars before they're even in the real world yet. So how do you, get that insight from manufacturers, from F1 teams? How do you get that secret information that's not even in the real world yet? Yeah, we are wizards, right? And now we're looking at what what's out there and then we can feel like as designers, we have that feeling like, okay, the Ferrari or this brand, they should probably cook something that will come soon and maybe one, two years from now on. Let's try to, to poke them and see what they are doing and if they want to work with us for something specific. It's either this way, or sometimes it also happens the other way around. Like the loose brands, they want they reach to us and they want to work with us with a specific car that they are working on and they will release in the next coming years. And if it matches with our criteria and the launch date that we want to have for the product, I think it's a win-win. And um, usually we try to, to match the launch of a, a novelty car so no one has seen it before. And we can have a good, better, big impact on the market when we launch together and then we release a product that no one has seen and we are there with the, the Lego Technic representation of it uh, at the same time. So we talk about secrecy and you told us about the lead times. Can you let us into any secrets about what you might be planning next? <laughs> oh, there's going to be a lot of cool supercars and cool, cool new cars, but uh, unfortunately I'm not allowed to share that oh, right now. Oh, no. I'll <laughs> it will spoil the, uh, spoil the dreams for every kids in the world, you know. <laughs> we wouldn't want to do that. Um, Aurelian, thank you so much. Uh, absolutely fascinating insight into this entire process. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks a lot. This is fantastic. NASA, Mars rover perseverance and uh, one tenth scale. It, first, it's beautiful. Second, it's super smart in terms of moving the arms on it, the wheels, when you turn them and it will turn 360 on a dime. Yeah, it's just, this is just such fascinating engineering. And what's really cool is it has augmented reality. So if you grab your phone, you can go around it and actually do missions. You've been so fascinated with this yeah. since you put it on the table. I love this. The steering arm all works. 
There's like a little brake pedal on this side, a little pl clutch lever here. You know, the chain moving all of the mechanism on the inside. So many things that are so close to reality. Even little things like the foot peg for the extra passioner. When I'm on my bike, <laughs> you can go on the back here. Well, this is where you need to put your feet on. I'm not that brave, but... <laughs> to go on my bike yeah. or any bike. Uh, any bike, but I think particularly yours. <laughs> That leaves us with the Audi RSQ e-tron. And brilliantly, you can actually control this it from brilliant. the app. But we have steering, full control of the steering. As you can see the front wheels move. Let's go, let's go and go straight. I don't trust you. <laughs> but it's so, like all of the movement in this. And if you look underneath again, all of the suspension. Yeah. Or it's meant for the Dakar, so the suspension needs to be good. It's really good. I'll drive it back to you, Bernie, then you can pick, you can pick it up. Right. Got it. Ah, <laughs> oh, and that's, now that shows fully through to conclusion from the processes of creating a car to one that actually has a, a motor in it and actually makes it run. And it brings an element of software control and design, doesn't it? It's yeah. like the next step one from just a static where you can play with all the bits. It's how that interacts with software that's not so important in our world. Well, Bernie, thank you so much. It's been a great day. I've loved nice. it. Even if I know I'm now probably a little bit too old to pursue a career in motorsport engineering. I don't think you're ever too old, Will, but it's maybe a bit more complex than just driving this model around the building. Yeah, I didn't even do that very well, did I? Um, Lego Technic, of course, gives us all such an incredible opportunity um, to gain an insight into motorsport engineering and for those young enough uh, and who want to, the start of an education in STEM, a start on a career towards motorsport engineering or for those of us who just want to have a little bit of fun with Lego Technic, you can build for real.